will have first use of the ball and it will be Bradford who will defend early doors here as we see the North Wales Crusaders come up with an error on the start of the game. It's happened in the in-goal area. So we will go for a goal line dropout that's been forced by young Aidan McGowan right at the start of this game. And that is not the start that North Wales Crusaders would have wanted here at Odsall coming up with that early error right at the start of this game. So early doors here. Bradford will go on the attack and it will be Danakora. Sorry, Aribi Doro, who has overcome the groin injury, who will take tackle number one. Danakora on the bench with Poposhiapo and Flanagan. Suter in at dummy half to Hallas. Hallas now to Smith. Smith's going to be brought down 25 out. Tackle number two. Bradford centre field position, playing towards the South Bank stand early in this game as Hallas now draws in the Crusaders' defence. And Hallas has come up with an error there out of acting half and the black shirted North Wales Crusaders have picked up possession here so one error apiece and we've had 40 seconds gone on the clock here this afternoon we'll keep you up to date with all the latest scores on the doors as and when those come in Matt Murdoch Gilbert says uh, come on George be a good boy this week the missus is listening well, we are on Bulls TV. We're also going out on West Yorkshire Radio. And as we said, it's currently Batley 40, Workington nil. It's Dewsbury 8, York 2, Fatto Heath nil, Featherstone 42. North Wales Crusaders up to halfway here with former Bradford forward Ben Evans, who, of course, featured for Toulouse as well uh, previously on in his career. Close season signing from Barrow as uh, North Wales Crusaders are inside the Bradford half on the fifth and last tackle. Ball goes on short side to Reese Purcell. He puts boot to ball, turns around McGowan and Myers on this main stand side, and that will be a play the ball for the Bradford Bulls. 15 metres out from their own try line here. We've had no score on the doors. It's the Bulls nil, the Crusaders nil, and it will be a play the ball here for Aidan McGowan. So Aidan McGowan plays the ball, suits us in there at dummy half. Here goes George Tafua on tackle number one. And he's made 20 metres there as George Tafua. Two tries last week in that win against the Dewsbury Rams. And uh, a little bit of a slip there going into that tackle from uh, young Jaden Myers. Here goes Dan Smith. He's recovered from illness and he's going to be brought down around about uh, on the halfway line uh, in a two-man tackle there by the North Wales Crusaders. Suter in at dummy half. Goes to Gaskell. Gaskell takes the... North Wales Crusaders line on. He's made 20 metres inside the North Wales half. He'll play the ball 30 metres out now. Suter at dummy half to McGowan. McGowan to Doro. Doro discharges onto a short dropped off ball, but Bradford on the last tackle now. 25 out from the North Wales Crusaders line. Centre field position as Gaskell puts one up. Inside chase here from McGowan. Arvan's done well. And Patrick Arvan fought about perhaps going on the outside there of uh, Myers and Arundel, but decided to just put the handbrake on. And uh, Patrick Arvan, of course, who uh, had that season for the Bulls back in, in 2011 here, uh, when you think back to some of the players that he arrived at the club with, uh, Shad Royston, uh, you might remember him. Um, he, he scored that wonder try against Wigan here in a very heavy defeat. <laughs> uh, it feels a lifetime ago, but we have an early penalty here. John Davis going in high on Kieran Taylor. So first penalty of the afternoon and it has gone the way of the visitors. Um, and as we said last week, what we didn't like about that performance against Dewsbury last week was those errors and that high penalty count uh, against the Bradford Bulls. A lot of it self-inflicted. Um, still scoreless in the game between Hunslet and Keefley. Four minutes on the clock there. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest scores. It's West Yorkshire Radio, West Yorkshire Rugby League. Also going out on Bulls TV uh, with Mick the Game Caller Gledel this afternoon. Uh, Chris Barrett now, tackle one. He's ten inside the Bradford half of the field. In there at dummy half is Rainford. Rainford gives the ball to Bushell. Bushell now gives it to Ellis. Ellis is wrapped up. Uh, under the nose of Doro and Smith. Ball goes down the middle here with Evans and North Wales Crusaders are going to go in here, but they've made a hash of the break. It was a lovely break from Chris Barrett. Chris Barrett just had Aidan McGowan to beat here. There was an early danger sign there for the Bradford Bulls and uh, the pass back on the inside from Barrett. He was looking for Toby Hughes and Reese Bushell, but it's been picked up by the Bradford Bulls and Bradford back in possession, 10 metres out from their own try line. They're up to their own 20 now here with Aidan McGowan on tackle number two. So an early line break, an early line break here 
from the visitors and that has put the Bulls under a little bit of pressure. They're now moving the ball from deep inside their own half of the field as Suter now to Gaskell. Gaskell kicks on the reserve, reverse looking for a 40-20. Bounce of the ball is kind over on the fast down side for Jack Holmes and Holmes turns defence into attack. So an off Wales Crusaders back in possession here. We've had exactly four minutes gone on the clock at Odsall Stadium. It's the Bradford Bulls no score, North Wales Crusaders nil. And a lot of people will be looking at this game and seeing it's a, a, a highly fancied championship side against a, North, a, a League One team. Uh, but Eamon O'Carroll, as we, when we spoke to him during the week, you know, Bradford have got to prefer, prefer, prepare sorry, for this game. Um, as we see another line break here from the Crusaders and it's Chris Barrett once again. He's going to find the support of Patrick Rainford. Rainford's 10 metres out here. And it's all North Wales Crusaders early in this game. They're on the last tackle, Arvan. They go short side on the far stand side and they're going to try and score in at the corner. They're over the Bradford line. Ball's down. Referee says no. Held up. Tried disallowed to the North Wales Crusaders there. It was Ryan Ellis who's gone over the line. And once again, early in this game, some danger signs for the Bulls because that's twice now Chris Barrett, the big prop forward for North Wales, has gone through this Bradford Bulls defensive line. Just looking over towards the main stand here. Uh, and there's still supporters, uh, latecomers coming in down the Rooley Avenue terracing. But here we go, six minutes gone on the clock. It's the Bulls new Crusaders nil here. West Yorkshire Radio, Bulls TV. As uh, George Tafua plays the ball, 15 out from his own try line. Hallas tackle two, 25 shy of halfway. Good 10 metre gain there from Hallas. Here goes Suter to Doro. Doro gives the ball back to McGowan. McGowan up and over halfway. Good play there from the Bulls. Good second phase action. That will please Eamon O'Carroll. Quick play of the ball from McGowan. And it's going to be Suter to Davis. Davis has made 10, 15 metres. Tackle four. One remaining for the Bulls. The 35 out from the North Wales Crusaders line as Suter now. Down the middle with Smith. Smith draws in Hallas. Hallas rolled over. Penalty on the last tackle here. And that's a costly, costly penalty because it's 20 metres out, right in front of the post. And uh, referee Brad Milligan there just pointing at Ben Evans and Sean Costello, the loose forward for the North Wales Crusaders. Uh, and he will penalise the visitors here. So Bradford now back on the attack. 10 metres out with Doro. Tackle one. Centre field position. Suter goes out of dummy half. Takes the line on. Bounces off one. Bounces off two. Suter's lost the ball. Bradford don't make it to tackle two. Jordan Lilly looks a little bit frustrated with uh, that passage of play. Uh, and that chance has gone begging from the Bradford Bulls. So seven gone on the clock. West Yorkshire Radio, Bulls TV. It is Bradford nil. North Wales nil. Bradford coming up with two early errors. Um, they have had the penalty. They have conceded a penalty. Um, they did force the goal line dropout uh, with the first kick of the game. Uh, but certainly Bradford Bulls a little bit rusty right at the start of this game. And after coming up with their second error, they've now conceded their second penalty uh, because it's a penalty against Lee Gaskell for hands in at the Rook. So, as we said, fresh after the heroics of their 2023 season, Cal Foster and the Crusaders, they'll be looking uh, to engineer a huge Challenge Cup shock at Odsall this afternoon and they've certainly got a lot of quality. We've mentioned Patrick Carvan, uh, Ben Evans, the fullback Owen Abel. He's a, a real dynamite type of player. And let's not forget, they made it to the League One Grand Final last season, uh, going down to Doncaster at the Keepmoat. So the Crusaders, they're here to play. And uh, early doors here, Bradford have come up with another penalty. And it's one of those old adages, if you turn up with the poor attitude, um, you will get beat. And Bradford, thus far, have conceded another penalty. It's another high tackle. Referee's pointing at Dan Smith on this occasion. Um, and that's now 3-1 against the Bulls. Crusaders have more possession and more territory inside the Bradford half of the field. It is still Dewsbury 8, York 2 at the Tetley Stadium, or should that be the Flair Stadium? Here come North Wales Crusaders on the attack, and it might be a couple of early changes here from Eamon O'Carroll because we've got George Flanagan, Dan Okoro, Kevin Apo warming up as the Crusaders can smell Bulls blood here. The five metres out now from that... Bradford Bulls try line. They're underneath the Bradford post as we see a lovely passage of play linking qualities there from Barrett to Bushell. 
Bushell's wrapped up there on tackle four. Ball goes out of dummy half here from Rainford. Pratt's, uh, Barrett, sorry, gives the ball along the line now to to uh, Ellis and Ellis is get, getting to his feet and he's playing the ball five metres out Ben Evans against his former club he's over the Bradford line can he get the ball down no he can't he's held up in the in goal area and that's the second time in quick succession that the North Wales Crusaders have been held up in the Bradford Bulls in goal area we're going to go back to where play the ball from Ben Evans on the last the ball short quick fast hands Bradford deal with that they were looking potentially for the kick there from Toby Hughes, but instead they went on that right-hand edge and Kieran Taylor's piercing run towards the Bradford line is halted there by Jordan Lilly and John Davis. So, Bradford Bulls nil, North Wales Crusaders nil here. A bit of a stuttery start from the Bulls. We've had exactly 10 minutes gone on the clock and this is the perfect start from the visitors who were certainly putting the Bulls under a lot of pressure. Suter now towards Myers. Myers tackle to 15 out from his own try line. Well, the Bradford Bulls made a convincing start to their 1895 Cup campaign, carrying on from their strong pre season and condemning the Dewsbury Rams to back to back defeats and an early exit from that 1895 Cup last week. Um, nil nil finding a little bit tougher here as Bradford awarded their second penalty of the afternoon. Hands in at the rook is the call, and Lee Gaskell has just taken the Bradford Bulls deep inside the North Wales half of the field. So two sorry, two penalties to the Bulls, three to the Crusaders. A Bradford about to open the score in here. Smith along the line to Hallis. Three black-shirted defenders bring him down. Ten metres out in front of the post. Suter to Lilly. Lilly to Doro. Doro discharges over the line, but the try will not be disallowed because... Doro has lost the ball before the try line. That is the call from Brad Milligan. Aribi Doro protesting, saying the ball was down on the line. But referee Brad Milligan, he was perfectly placed. Doro died for the line a couple of millimetres early. And I think it's the impact of him diving short of the line. The ball's squirted out of his possession. Uh, and that is another error here from the Bradford Bulls. And the scoreboard remains Bradford nil, North Wales nil. Well, we mentioned Dan Smith's back from his illness after only training twice in the last fortnight. There's no Ben Blackmore. He's got syndemosis injury and he's looking at around six to eight weeks. Michael Lawrence, of course, he has that back injury sustained during training. No estimated return on his return. Eben Skur's looking at being out for around two to four weeks. Billy Jowett, of course, has that back injury. Um, his ETA is probably looking at around around the Widnes Doncaster Cup game. But thankfully, when I spoke to him and <laughs> Carol during the week, uh, he'd had the, the nod from Ian Watson that Aidan McGowan can feature for the Bradford Bulls. So he'll be cup tied to the Bradford Bulls as we see another penalty here. Chester Butler is putting pressure on the back, or should I say the neck of Patrick Carvan. So we've got a high penalty count here. Already we've had seven penalties this afternoon. Uh, so both sides' discipline is certainly going to be a little bit of an issue but hopefully nothing too serious, as we said, with Ben Blackmore. It isn't an ACL injury. I spoke to Ben uh, earlier on this week, um, and he's just going to look to his, start his rehab, and he'll be back in six to eight weeks. So, Bradford, obviously, doing it tough out there with a couple of big-name players on the injury list, but certainly a more than capable Bradford side starting 17 this afternoon to get the job done, Eamon O'Carroll will feel. But early doors here, they're in a real battle here with the men from Colwyn Bay as we see Owen Abel give the ball along the line to Matt Ushworth. Ushworth's brought down 25 out. North Wales Crusaders attacking on the back of being awarded their fourth penalty of the afternoon and they're now 15 out as Suter and Hallis grapple with Ben Evans. Evans to his feet. Quick play of the ball. Kick comes in here from Rainford. Rainford's going to force Aidan McGowan dead in goal. And that's clever play there from Patrick Rainford. And the North Wales Crusader supporters over in the main stand, they start the chant of uh, crew, crew, Crusaders. And it's them that have got all the early possession here. And they're putting the Bulls really under the pump. It's a, a quick goal line dropout taken by Aidan McGowan. It's up and over halfway, but back come the black-shirted North Wales Crusaders. As Doro does well to bring down Jack Holmes. Holmes get to his feet. 
and he's going to play the ball 35 out now from the Bradford Bulls try line. Referee will stop the clock and he'll just say it's a, a poor attempt at the play of the ball and he's moved off the mark, so he's giving Holmes the benefit of the doubt there. Here goes loose forward Sean Costello. Costello's brought down 40 out now from the Bradford line, tackle two, Rainford who forced the goal line dropout, the first of the afternoon for the Crusaders, gives the ball here to Bushell, Reese Bushell on this left hand side, 25 out now, two tackles remaining, Rainford goes back in at dummy half, it goes to Evans Evans, short ball there towards Barrett, Barrett's wrapped up and it's a six again because Bradford are laying on in the tackle and the Crusaders are heading towards the corner on the far stand side with Ryan Ellis Ellis is brought down 10 metres out and it's all the North Wales Crusaders here, the men from League One looking for a big Challenge Cup shock. As we see Ben Evans now have a tilt and charge towards the Bradford line. Centre field underneath the post, fourth metres out. They've got a fresh set of six after that set restart. That will not please Eamon O'Carroll as Bushell gives it to Abel. A Rundle puts his body on the line. He comes out of that defensive line and that's a good defensive play there from the Bradford Bulls. Gaskell's gone in over the top on the tackle and it's a penalty in front of the post and Carl Foster wants the North Wales Crusaders to take the lead here and this will allow the Bradford Bulls some thinking time. They've conceded six penalties now, a set restart, and we have only had 15 minutes gone on the clock. This is a very, very poor, disjointed Bradford Bulls performance at this particular stage in this game. So, Owen Abel, who was two from two in North Wales Crusaders' heavy defeat to Swinton, They've had the week off from 1895 Cup action with Swinton playing Widnes in that Group 6 fixture last week. They lost 40 points to 12 at home to Swinton a fortnight ago as North Wales' hopes of 1895 Cup progress were extinguished in Game 1. We're turning the kit predictor on for the first time this afternoon and it's saying 100% here because it is 12 metres out just to the left-hand side of the post. And uh, I'm sure the message has come on from Glenn Morrison uh, and, and Lee Greenwood from Eamon O'Carroll that this first half performance currently thus far is not acceptable. So North Wales Crusaders open the scoring here by the boot of Owen Abel and it's Bradford Bulls no score. North Wales Crusaders two on West Yorkshire Radio Bulls TV. 15 minutes gone on the clock. So Abel... One of the stars of this North Wales Crusaders side. Well, I'm just looking at the stats here. Bradford have come up with four errors, six penalties and a set restart. That's 11 times in this opening 15 minutes that they have given the North Wales Crusaders cheap possession. If that continues, Bradford will not get anything from this game and their Challenge Cup run will be halted at the first attempt. <coughs> so we're back underway here at Odsall Stadium. Bradford looking for a response. The trailing North Wales Crusaders by two points to nil. Chris Barrett now to Evans. Evans rolled over 20 out from his own try line. Tackle three. Smith and Butler, the two Bradford defenders. Doro comes in, puts his body on the line. Good defence there. On the back row forward, Ryan Ellis. Ellis to his feet. Ball goes on that right-hand side. Here goes Barrett again. Chris Barrett punching holes in this Bulls defence. The 10 Shire halfway. Ball goes back to Abel. Owen Abel put under pressure there from Jordan Lilly. McGowan's going to take it in his own 20, 25, 30. He's 20 shy of halfway here is Aidan McGowan. As it goes out of dummy half from Kieran Gill to Tafua. Tafua now. <coughs> Five shy a half way. Eight points apiece between Drewsbury and York. Bradford given a set restart. <coughs> <coughs> North Wales Crusaders just laying on in the tackle. According to match official Brad Milligan. <coughs> Early interchange from the Bulls as Apo comes on. Gives the ball back to Suter. Mitch Suter's now 20 metres out from that Bradford Bulls try line. Referee's going to stop the clock again here. Very slow, pedestrian-style passage of play here. He's telling Mitch Suter he's got to go back the, to the 20-metre line. So he'll play the ball 20 metres out. Hallis now to Doro. Doro back to Hallis. 
apologies for the cough as we see Hallis now front up and his 12 out centre field position Hallis very sloppy Messi play the ball but here goes Kevin Apo Apo two metres out from the line Bradford one tackle remaining here as Doro tries to crash over for a second time he's short of the line and they're on the last tackle now the Bradford Bulls a metre out underneath the post Crusaders up by two is that about to change Gaskell looking for Myers Patrick Carvan try saving play from him he somehow grounds the ball before Myers and Arundel goal line drop out forced Clever play there from Gaskell on the last tackle. Clever play from former Bradford man Patrick Harvan. So North Wales back to back sets there defending on their line. Here goes Myers tackle one. Doro tackle two. He's 12 metres out, 10 metres out now. Aribi Doro is still going. He's five metres out from that North Wales try line as Bradford tried to go in over on the short side with John Davis. It's a penalty for high contact there on John Davis. Referee points to scrum half Toby Hughes, who's gone a little bit too high there. Well, we're already up to 10 penalties here, uh, and, and we're, we're just a minute shy of the 20-minute the mark, so it's going to be one of those afternoons you feel where there's going to be a high penalty count. If... Either side don't manage to sort out their discipline. So, Bradford, this is their third set of six here as Chester Butler tries to charge his way towards the North Wales Crusaders try line. He's two metres out, a suitor now to Apo. Oh, what a tackle that was on Kevin Apo there. I think that was Sean Costello. Apo fell two metres out. Doros in. Doros over the line for the Bradford Bulls. And at long, long last... Aribi Doro, the third time of asking, he will open the scoring for the Bradford Bulls this afternoon. But what a tackle that was on Kevin Apple from Sean Costello. He really put his body on the line. It's a fully committed performance from the men from Colwyn Bay. And Bradford are being made to work incredibly hard this afternoon for every point. But they do take the lead for the first time. Exactly 20 minutes gone on the clock. Bradford Bulls four, North Wales Crusaders two here. Uh, and it's that man who's having a, a wow of a season for the Bradford Bulls, Aribi Doro. He gets his first Bulls try of the season. And this one is uh, a relatively easy attempt for Jordan Lilly just to the side of the post. Kick predictor already saying it's at 100%. And uh, at long, long last, after some ill discipline from the North Wales Crusaders, Bradford punish the men from Colwyn Bay and that will please Eamon O'Carroll much much better response much much better structured play from the Bradford Bulls after a very sluggish start Lily from in front of the post one from one from him and it's Bradford Bulls six North Wales Crusaders two here at Odsall Stadium on West Yorkshire Radio Bulls TV and that has obviously come on the back of the goal line dropout on the back of the set restart also on the back of that penalty, that high tackle from Toby Hughes on John Davis. Lady scores on the doors, a bit of a mini fight back at Mount Pleasant. It's Batley 40, Workington 18. They were leading 40 points to nil. Um, so a couple of late tries, consolation scores for Workington Town. It's still eight points apiece at the Flair Stadium between Dewsbury and York. It's Fato Heath nil, Featherstone Rovers 56. Halifax leading Whitehaven 12 points to nil. And Hunslet leading Keefley 6 points to nil. And Bradford have made a hash of the restart here. And uh, Reese Bushell's restart is going to see North Wales Crusaders handed the ball and the possession in a scrum 15 metres out from the Bradford line so the Bulls have gone in front but then they've gone to sleep and that is error number six in this first half from the Bradford Bulls well the winner of the game today will host the winner of Widnes versus Doncaster and it's currently Doncaster leading the Vikings of Widnes six points to four so currently as things stand it will be Bradford against Doncaster but North Wales are going to have a 
a, a very uh, thorough uh, response to that question. So here we go. We've had 24 minutes gone on the clock. Six points to two. What an effort this has been thus far from the men from Colwyn Bay, North Wales. Ten metres out now as Rainford gives the ball once again to Barrett and Barrett's wrapped up. He's held up over the uh, just short of the Bradford line here. He'll get to his feet, he'll play the ball. Rainford to Evans. Evans takes the Bradford line on, but he can't get past Doro. <coughs> Hallis involved in that tackle as well. Literally a metre out from that Bradford Bulls try line. Ben Evans against his former club. Rainford tries to pinch one out of dummy half, but his run is halted. This is really good defence here from the Bradford Bulls. They lead six points to two here. They're on the last tackle, the men from Colwyn Bay. Hughes gives the ball towards Ellis. Ryan Ellis can't take it in. Forward pass called by the officials. And it remains Bradford Bulls six, North Wales two. Bradford taking over possession, 10 out from their own try line. Widnes, incidentally, have just gone back in front there at Norton Park. Kieran Dixon with a try. It's now 10 points to six in favour of Alan Coleman's side. So Sam Hallis leaves the field. Dan Okora has come on the field. We'll, we'll try and sort the interviews out at half-time. Certainly... Uh, not quite sure why the uh, the Jordan Lilly file's a little bit corrupted, but another penalty here now to Bradford. Someone's gone in high in the tackle. Well, the penalty count slowly even itself up. It's now six penalties to four uh, and a set restart each. And you almost feel Bradford, if they can get a little bit of momentum, as Dan Acora, the former Hulkies to Rovers man, sets the platform up nicely here. 15 metres out, centre field. Suter to Apo. Apo twisting, turning, wrapped up by three hungry defenders. They're backed up on their own try line now, the Crusaders. As Suter goes once again to Akora. Dan Akora's second carry in this set of six here for the men wearing the white shirt with the red, amber and black trim as Kevin Apo tries to cross underneath the post, but he's pushed back in the field of play. Two tackles left here for the Bulls. They lead six points to two here. A set restart given as da Eribe Doro tries to dive over underneath the post. It's a real schmozzle there. It's a heavily congested part of the field with uh, North Wales stacking defenders there as Jordan Lilly. Pirouettes and dances his way five metres out there, Jordan Lilly. Just to the left-hand side of the post. If you're just joining us... An interesting game taking place here as Mitch Suter's over the line. It's a back-to-back -back set restarts now. North Wales just slowing down the play of the ball. You, you'd expect the referee, if there's any more set restarts, for him to take some action and, and deal with the, the offences being committed by the North Wales Crusaders defenders. But here come Bradford now. We Gaskell to Butler. Butler angled run. Can he cross the line? He's just been turned at the last moment, so he'll turn and face the line. Short ball to Arundel. Arundel crosses over. Bradford have that crucial second try. And once again, it's come on the back of North Wales Crusaders' ill-discipline because they've conceded two consecutive set restarts. Bradford, on what was their fourth possession, have breached North Wales line for the second time this afternoon. It's to the right-hand side of the post. And immediately Patrick Carvan calls the players in a huddle behind the post. And I think North Wales Crusaders might just want to have a little bit of a, a, a constructive uh, criticism, a bit of harsh words there um, about the discipline because they've conceded the four penalties and the four set restarts now. Uh, and that has aided the Bradford Bulls recovery, who did trail by two points to nil here, but it's now 10 points to two. We're in the 28th minute at Odsall Stadium. So Doro and Arundel getting on the score sheet at Odsall Stadium in this third round Challenge Cup tie. Well, as we said, they had a good run in the playoffs last season, North Wales Crusaders. They made the final. They beat Oldham, Workington and Hunslet on their way to that grand final match with Doncaster at the Keepmoat Stadium. And certainly they are a side that deserves... Full respect. Jordan Lilly then kick predictor, 68%. That goes between the posts. He was four from eight last week. Jordan Lilly is two from two this afternoon. 
Scoreboard keeps ticking over for Herman O'Carroll and the Bulls. It's now Bradford 12, North Wales 2. Keefley have got a try against Hunsley. It's now 10 points to four in favour of Hunsley. Don't forget Will Adams has joined Hunsley on a season-long loan. And Eamon O'Carroll, as we said, he was left counting the cost of his side's 44 win over Dewsbury last week. There's no Ben Blackmore. As we said, he's looking at around six to eight weeks out injured. Michael Lawrence still suffering with that back complaint that he picked up in training. Eben Skur looking at around two to four weeks. And Billy Jowett, he's still got that back injury. Uh, but he's, he's expected to be back any week now is, uh, is Billy Jowett. And Michael Lawrence, as we said, I wrote out the... Uh, <laughs> the the uh, the 350 career uh, game milestone. So uh, I've kept that little bit of post-it note. Uh, I'm dying to use it. But here at Odsall Stadium, Bradford 12, North Wales 2 uh, at Odsall Stadium. Matt Murdoch Gilbert says keep the pressure on now. Paul Holbrook says yes. Sue says yes, that's good. And Bullpower says much much better. Although Bradford have come up with an error here with Lily and Souter and John Davis. Uh, overcooking the passing on the restart. So Bradford made it to tackle three. They made it ten shy a half way, uh, and they've come up with error number seven in this first half. I think Eamon O'Carroll said during the week that they made eight errors um, in that first half against Dewsbury, um, partly due to the wind. But, you know, that gives you an idea of the Herculean effort that Bradford displayed in defence to uh, restrict Dewsbury to just four points last week, despite coming up with a high error high penalty count. Well, here at Odsall Stadium, 30 minutes gone, 10 to go to half-time, not a classic by any imagination, as Levy and Zonga, who's just come on the field, the former Bradford prop, uh, he knuckles down and, and tangles there with uh, Kieran Gill uh, and Dana Cora, and Kieran Gill's been penalised by referee Brad Milligan, uh, and that's another set restart of six again. So um, it's one of those afternoons, loyal listeners, where ill-discipline uh, is certainly a feature of both sides' frailties. North Wales are 15 metres out underneath the Bradford Bulls post as Olivier Zongu gives the ball to Hughes. Hughes now to Abel. Abel wrapped up there by Lilly. Good defence there from Jordan Lilly. Great defence. Good defensive read there by Jordan Lilly. That will stop North Wales' attack at this particular moment in time as Hughes goes to Nzongu. <laughs> Nzongu and Doro collide underneath the post. 10 metres out. Suter comes in as second man. It just drags Doro off of Levy and Zongu. Ball goes back towards Barrett. Barrett fancies his chances here, but he's not getting past to Coro and Apo. And North Wales are on the fifth and last tackle. Arvan's calling for the kick. They're going to lose the ball, though, in North Wales because Hughes tries to give it to Bushell. Bushell was going to go through a gap, but young Reese Bushell, he's dropped the ball. North Wales have come up with every number five from their first half here. So that will be a turnover in possession. And I guess one of those pleasing aspects from the Bradford Bulls at this stage in this game is despite conceding those six penalties, two set restarts and coming up with seven errors, they have disrestricted North Wales Crusaders to just two points on the scoreboard. It is Dewsbury 8, York 8, heading towards potentially Golden Point extra time there. It's still Batley 40, Workington 18 and Fatal Heath. They now trail Featherstone Rovers by 60 points to nil as Bradford now after that error from the Crusaders, a 10 metre shy of halfway. Ball goes back to Jordan Lilly. Lilly looks for a 40 20. He's got the accuracy, Jordan Lilly, but it just not got the power on the kick. Abel comes back, five out from his own try line. Good kick chase there from Lilly as uh, he follows that kick up there alongside Butler and Arundel. Here we go with North Wales deep in possession. Ball's skittled out of the. Uh, the back row was palm there from Matty Unsworth. Referee says it's gone backwards. And now Brad Milligan comes in and he's going to say Kevin Apo. Yeah, he's giving the Bradford Bulls possession here. 15 out from the North Wales line. Uh, and he's going to say Kevin Apo has come up with... Uh, or should I say Kevin Apo has forced the error here on Patrick Carvan, who's 
just leisurely walking away with the ball. He'll give the ball to Lee Gaskell. And there's a chance here for Bradford to get a third try before half-time. It's Halifax 22, Whitehaven 0, and it's Hunslick 10, Keefley 4. Bradford 12, North Wales 2 here at Odsall Stadium. And now Bradford have lost the ball on tackle one, as Dan Akora can't keep hold of the ball. He's on his knees trying to play it, and the ball's just been inexplicably lost. So an eight error here in the first half from the Bradford Bulls and on West Yorkshire Radio, West Yorkshire Rugby League. It remains Bradford Bulls 12, North Wales 2. Rochdale 12, Midland Hurricanes 14. Mike Dunning's side currently leading their League One counterparts uh, at the Spotland Stadium. It's still Winners Vikings 10. Doncaster 6, Swinton lead West Hull 12 0. And the game that we've not really mentioned much, but it's really exciting. Jewsbury Rams 8, York 8. Callum Turner, Perry Whitley, and a penalty from Callum Turner. Although York have just gone in, uh, and they're going to break Jewsbury's hearts in the, the dying moments of that game. It's 14 points to uh, 8. Uh, a lot of people joining us on the, the call this afternoon. Uh, they're saying, for goodness sake, too many errors. Um, very scrappy, sloppy performance. And... Uh, Bradford now backed up on defence as North Wales enter the Bradford half with Levy and Zongu, five metres, 45 out. They're on the fifth and last tackle, so a good clean set of six here from the men from Colwyn Bay. Uh, as Owen Abel goes on a power play run, kicks over the top here. Ball's picked up by the Crusaders. He's got it as Owen Abel, but he's managed to kick ahead as George Tafua gets there. And Tafua's back in possession here for the Bradford Bulls. There's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of... I was going to say... It must feel like uh, a little bit of a pest here. And someone's given dissent to the official, so... Um, Levigan Zongu involved in that one. George Tafua was not able to get a quick play of the ball in, so that was the penalty to Bradford. And then someone's given dissent. So six penalties apiece now. And Bradford really could do with that third try just before half-time because we've got five minutes to go to half-time and it's still 12 points to two in favour of the Bulls after tries from Doro, Doro and Arundel. But this is one of those games where, obviously, Bradford are just going to have to roll the sleeves up. You know, it's a full-bodied, fully committed performance from the North Wales Crusaders as Ada McGowan now takes the line on. He's 15 metres out underneath the post. Centre-field position. So Bradford, four minutes left to half-time. Can they get a third try and put more daylight between the two sides as Lily now goes through a gap? Lily, eight metres out. Barrett comes in alongside Bushell and he's going to play the ball just to the left-hand side of the post. Here goes Suter to Apo. Apo, five metres out. Last tackle coming up here for the Bradford Bulls. They're underneath the post. Gaskell's calling for the ball. Gaskell finds McGowan. McGowan through a gap. McGowan's in! Aidan McGowan... He'll be cup tied with the Bradford Bulls, but with tries like that, he might be the catalyst to take the Bulls on a Challenge Cup journey near and far. And that was lovely linking play between Gaskell and McGowan again. They scored a lovely scrum move play last week against the Jewsbury Rams. And Aidan McGowan is really lighting up Odsall. And those Bradford Bulls supporters, they'll be treating him like one of the road because that was a lovely try from Aidan McGowan. Ten metres out, there was four North Wales Crusaders defenders in front of him. It was the last tackle. Maybe North Wales were expecting the kick, but McGowan beats one, beats two, goes past Owen Abel and he takes a bit of a tough tackle in the back from Matty Ushworth, the back row forward who takes McGowan into the in-goal area over the line and in the seven, uh, sorry, in the 38th minute here at Odsall it is Bradford 16 North Wales 2 and Bradford just put in a bit of daylight here between the two sides but Eamon O'Carroll, he will be far from happy one would suspect with this first half performance where Bradford have come up with eight errors and six penalties. Jordan Lilly, kick predictor. 54% this one, but Lilly puts it between the posts. Bradford 18, North Wales 2 here at Odsall Stadium this afternoon. It is not the best performance by any imagination from the Bulls. You're probably rating it four or five out of ten from what we've seen. But Bradford, to their credit, have capitalised on the back of North Wales' errors and North Wales' ill-discipline. As we said, they conceded two quick penalties, 
because George Tafua not allowed to play the quick play of the ball. And then, as we saw, a bit of descent towards match official Brad Milligan, and that advanced the Bulls further and deeper still into the North Wales half of the field. So there's just seconds left in this first half here at Odsall Stadium. Bradford 18 after tries from Doro, Arundel and McGowan. North Wales opened the scoring in the 15th minute with that penalty as Bradford were penalised for a high tackle. And now North Wales are penalised again here because the markers are not square. So 7-6, the penalty count in favour of the Bradford Bulls. There's literally seconds left on the clock here. Referee's going to stop the clock because there's two balls on the field. So do Bradford perhaps go for a, a, a drop goal here? There's literally seconds left in the first half. The 30 metres out from the line. No, they're going to go for some Hail Mary play as uh, Gaskell kicks towards Jaden Myers. Patrick Carvan is trapped on his own try line. He was alert to the danger using all his Super League and Championship and now League One experience. But half time here at Odsall Stadium. This one is far from over. It is Bradford 18, North Wales 2. And a real pass on this uh, this message. So Andrew Foster, of course, the, the dad of, of, of uh, young uh, Rykoft uh, Foster, who, who very sadly died aged 16 months last June. Well, Rykoft's mum and dad, Catherine and Andrew, um, are looking for 747 generous people to give just £10. Thousands of people have already donated. Catherine and Andrew are roughly 90% of the way there and they just need a final push to hit their funding target and be able to give £60,000 to his free charities, Great Ormond Street Hospital, Colchester Children's Ward and SDS UK. Uh, Catherine and Andrew are going back to Colchester Children's Ward on Thursday this week on Rycroft's birthday as it was the place where he celebrated the only birthday he ever saw. So it would be good if anybody who's out there listening, um, if they were going to you know, with Andrew and Catherine going there, uh, having achieved their target um, and being able to de donate the full £60,000 amount in Rykoff's memory. Um, I put the link on the Bradford Bulls live Facebook page. Uh, it is a Just Giving uh, link, uh, but you can find it using the uh, link Rycroft 6000. Uh, sorry, Rycroft 60,000. But yeah, thought we'd get that in there. Well, Bradford back in possession here. They will have first use of the ball at the start of the second half. And it's Bradford 18, North Wales 2. And already Bradford skittling over North Wales Crusaders defenders and a much, much improved performance based on the opening 30 seconds as Suter now gives the ball to Davis. Davis offloads the ball backwards towards Akora. Referee's going to say knock on though. Bit of a harsh call that one. Certainly went backwards. Not sure Don John Davis had to release the ball. As we see North Wales Crusaders head coach, Carl Foster, uh, just come out and he will watch the second half on the touchline. So, despite a positive start to the second half, um, certainly four tackles in, Bradford have come up with their first error of the second half um, and it's their ninth error in total. And I know a lot of people might get a little bit frustrated uh, with me saying how many errors and how many penalties, but that's the way I've always called the games and I always will do. It gives me uh, a mental picture, a mental breakdown of just how uh, you know competent uh, or, uh, or incompetent uh, the performance is. But here goes Levy and Zongo up to halfway. In there at dummy half is Joseph Baldwin. Baldwin now gives the ball to Matt Unsworth. He's brought down five inside the Bradford Bulls half of the field. If you just join us right at the start of this second half, West Yorkshire Radio, West Yorkshire Rugby League, Bulls TV with Mick, Mick the Game Caller Gleddle, Sunday afternoon rugby league. Uh, and it is Bradford leading North Wales by 18 points to two in a first half that was littered with errors and penalties and, and free Bradford tries. So North Wales on the last tackle here. They go the short side. Kick on the inside from Bushell. Chasing it is going to be Owen Abel. And Aidan McGowan was isolated there in the in-goal area. So safety first from young Aidan McGowan. He will force the ball dead in goal. Just looking in the South Bank stand, uh, can see owner Nigel Wood there, Jason Hurst, uh, Paul Wilde, a couple of the other Bradford Bulls directors. Um, a penny for their thoughts on what they're witnessing because... 
a lot of people expected a, lands a landslide from, from Bradford this afternoon and it still could blow out. We've seen Wakefield yesterday against Siddle post 50 plus points. We saw Sheffield do it against Newcastle yesterday in that second half. But so far, North Wales Crusaders are going to take all the positives and all the plaudits from this performance. So they've forced their second goal line dropout. Here goes Chris Barrett. He's on tackle three, 20 out from the Bradford Bulls try line as we see back row forward Ryan Ellis brought down there in a two-man tackle. Kevin Apo going through a lot of work, so too Kieran Gill involved in that tackle. 18 metres out now, and North Wales in front of the post here with Barrett. Good quick hands, though, from the visitors, and uh, that defence from the Bradford Bulls certainly keeping North Wales at bay. One tackle remaining on this set of six after forcing the goal line drop out as Barrett takes the line on himself. Levy and Zongu was calling for the ball on the outside. They're on the last tackle, five metres out. They're looking to give it to either Bushell or Hughes for last tackle play. It goes towards Bushell. Bushell gives it towards Unsworth. They've gone for the power play move, and that's good defence from the Bradford Bulls there. We've had three minutes gone at the start of the second half. A bit of a shaky start. They come up with the area of the Bulls, and uh, they were forced to defend a, a second set after Reese Bushell's kick on the diagonal forced Aidan McGowan to uh, push the ball dead. But it is Bradford 18, North Wales 2. And I think the pleasing aspect from Eamon O'Carroll will be Bradford's watertight defence. Here goes Jaden Myers, tackle 1. Tackle 2 over on the far stand side with Chester Butler. He gets to his feet and plays the ball. Ball back on the inside now to Tafua. George Tafua, two tries last week against the Dewsbury Rams. And what was pleasing from that Dewsbury performance was that back row positions in terms of McGowan, Myers, Arundel, Gill and Tafua on the edges, all giving on the score sheet as Kevin Apple promotes the ball, loses it backwards and another knock-on against the Bradford Bulls. I'm not sure Kevin Apple knew much about that. He's clearly been called for the ball from John Davis. Uh, and Bradford have come up with yet another error. And that is uh, it's a continuation of what we saw in the first half Bradford playing dumb rugby league football, offloading the ball when they don't really need to as uh, Danakora leaves the field and Bradford make their first change of this second half. So scrum head and feed to the men from Colwyn Bay, lovely part of the world. I was on the North Welsh coast on, uh, on Monday and Tuesday last week. So yeah, Danakora leaves the field. Dan Smith goes back on, so Dan Okoro leaves the field with a HIA. He will go down the tunnel for the head injury assessment from the uh, Bradford Bulls doctor. So that won't count on the interchange, but here come North Wales, and I think for their efforts, you know, they're throwing the kitchen sink, the cutlery drawer, pretty much everything, uh, every utensil uh, imaginable at Bradford. You know, they'll be probably questioning themselves what do they need to do to break down this resolute, resilient Bradford Bulls defence. So while... Ball in hand, Bradford have been very poor with discipline uh, issues. Defensively, uh, they are making things incredibly hard here for the North Wales Crusaders as Barrett's wrapped up here. Ten metres out, they're on the last tackle now, the Crusaders. Ball goes towards Bushell to Abel. Abel run halted and John Davis and Aribi Doro come in alongside Jordan Lilly and the North Wales Crusaders fullback Owen Abel, who we highlighted in the pre match amble as being one of the danger men for the Crusaders, his run is halted on the power play, so Bradford back in possession I think Eamon O'Carroll will probably just be wanting a couple of sets of six where Bradford keep hold of the ball don't do anything silly as Aribi Doro's gone down in back play, just receiving physical uh, physio treatment sorry he did uh, suffer the groin injury in that game last week against Dewsbury but He's put his hand up to play this uh, afternoon. And here's another player in possession, uh, Dan Smith, who put his hand up to play. He suffered an illness and he's only done two training sessions in the last fortnight. And uh, the former Castleford, former Leeds, former Featherstone man uh, has won a penalty five shy of halfway. And now the referee, Brad Milligan, not happy with the amount of penalties that the North Wales Crusaders are conceding. He's just having a word with the captain, Chris Barrett here and Joseph Baldwin. And Joseph Baldwin's going to be sent from the field of play. Ten minutes in the sim bin. The referee's had enough. Bradford awarded their eighth penalty in this game. And they're down to 12 men. So, is this the catalyst? Is this the spark? Referee Brad Milligan clearly had enough with what's been happening out there on the field. Um, and he's going to actually say the call against Joseph Baldwin is for going in with the elbow on Dan Smith in the tackle. So, 
We have had five minutes gone in this second half. It is still 18 points to two. And Bradford are on the tack now. Full set of six, 20 metres out as we see Apo tackle one. Centre field position. King Kev gets to his feet. He'll play the ball. Suter now to Lily. Lily to Gaskill. Lovely line to McGowan. McGowan just can't get past Maddie Reid. And Reid reigns in Aidan McGowan. Five metres in from the far stand touchline. So back the move it into centre field here with Smith. Smith surging forward. He's got four North Wales Crusaders defenders on him. And that will take them out of the defensive line. They hurry back in haste as uh, it goes to Suter. To Apo. Apo's over the line. And Bradford once again making that ill discipline from the North Rules Crusaders. Pay daily. The down to 12, the men from Colwyn Bay. And Kevin Apo gets his first try of the season. He gets in on the act this afternoon. Bradford now lead 22 points to two. And when you talk about game breaking moments, that is probably the game breaking moment. They've not looked like scoring. Uh, more than a try or two, North Wales Crusaders, and it's probably that moment there where Bradford are going to book their place in the next round of the draw very, very early in the second half, I must, I must say, but certainly you'd expect Bradford now to get that full steam ahead. And uh, it's interesting, really, when you watch that play because it was simple, effective rugby league from Bradford. Not trying to do Harlem Globetrotter esque stuff with ball in hand you know they kept it simple the drives down the middle with the forwards Doro Davis and then Apo lovely ball from Gaskill and Lilly and Jordan Lilly from in front of the post here this to take the Bulls out to 24 points which he does it's Bradford Bulls 24 North Wales Crusaders 2 here at Utsal Stadium and I'm guessing the message from Eamon O'Carroll now is, with uh, 35 minutes still in this game to go, it's all about building for next week's game against Keefley in what will be a last 16 shootout with either Keefley or Bradford booking a place in the 1895 Cup quarter-finals. So... West Yorkshire Radio, Bulls TV, back... Here at Odsall, Owen Abel gets the restart away. Ball goes bouncing into touch. And young Jaden Myers not able to deal with that one. So, another opportunity for North Wales. And Bradford have come up with error number 11. It's a horrific high error count from the Bradford Bulls here. And here come North Wales Crusaders. On the attack, on the charge, looking to get their first try of the afternoon and get themselves back in the game. Barrett will get to his feet. He'll play the ball. It'll go from Reese Bushell to Matt Unsworth. Unsworth, a metre out from Matt Bradford trial. Like North Wales Crusaders, remember, down to 12 men for 10 minutes after the sim binning of uh, Joseph Baldwin. And here come the Crusaders with Owen Abel. And Abel's going to be brought down. Five metres out from that Bradford Bulls trial. And in there at dummy half will go Kieran Taylor. Taylor off the boot laces to Barrett. Barrett's going to be brought down five metres out and he's rolled over. The Bradford Bulls about to bring on Elliot Piposhe. He featured last week on his Bulls debut as 18th man after Bradford had suffered those injuries to both Eben Skur and Ben Blackmore. North Wales Crusaders underneath the post with Levy and Zongu here. They're on the last tackle. Owen Abel, short ball. Once again, Bradford's defence alert. And we have to say it as it is. Bradford's defence has been exemplary this afternoon. They are really putting in an effort in defence. Sadly, when it's coming to the attack, it's a little bit clunky, a little bit jittery. And as we said, they've, uh, they've come up with those... 11 errors, but it is Bradford Bulls 24, North Wales Crusaders 2 here at Odsall Stadium. We've got 31 minutes left on the clock, and here goes Elliot Peposha, close season signing from St Helens. He had the, the trial during the pre season, and he'll get to his feet and he'll play the ball. And here goes Karen Gill towards Jordan Lilly. Lilly's wrapped up eight metres shy of halfway. It's Hunslet 10, Keefley 12, so Keefley on for a, a big. Uh, potential um, 
shock potentially. I'm not sure who was favourites in that game. You'd probably argue Hunslet were after the way they performed last season. Here goes Lily kicking early in the count, drills it along the floor. Abel has to come across and uh, he will immediately be tackled there by Kieran Gill and John Davis in a two-man tackle. In there at dummy half is uh, Jack Holmes. Holmes gives the ball there towards Ryan Ellis and Ellis is immediately smothered there uh, and that was good defence from Elliot Peposhi big physical presence and Peposhi goes then on Arvan and that's good defence once again from the Bradford Bulls North Wales Crusaders they're still 10 shy of halfway here Arvan just looks around and looks who the heck was that who brought me down they're up to halfway here on tackle four. One remaining here for Carl Foster's side as it goes out of dummy half from Bushell. Bushell now towards Unsworth. Unsworth brought down five metres inside the Bradford half of the field. They're on the fifth and last tackle here as a ball's drilled into touch from Toby Hughes. And I think that probably is the play from North Wales Crusaders where they have accepted they're not going to win this game, but they're just going to try and keep the scoreboard respectable and try and frustrate the living daylights out of the Bradford Bulls so 30 metres out from your opponent's line in a, a, a do or die you know no second chance game in the, the challenge cup you look in my opinion for an aerial bombardment or certainly to put a bit of pressure on that Bradford Bulls defensive line you don't drill the ball into touch here goes Lee Gaskell quick fast hands to Butler Butler's away, up and over halfway, rolled over there in a defensive tackle there by Manny Reid and also Jack Holmes. Ball's going to ping into centre field here with Aidan McGowan and Aidan McGowan, who's scored a try in Bradford's last two games, he will be brought down <coughs> 10 metres inside that North Wales half of the field. So the 40 away from the Crusaders' try line. Flanagan's just come on the field here for Souter and Bradford have come up with yet another error as uh, Dan Smith's not able to take that pass and the crowd you know audibly very frustrated with what they're seeing here this afternoon error number 12 from the Bulls and I'm sure this is something that Eamon O'Carroll will be looking to address this coming week by the way Starman's joining us uh, and we've also got Andy Andy's made a good point he just says for the last three to four seasons discipline has been an issue Penalty after penalty, do the players not listen to the, the coaching staff? Well, don't like going in hard on Eamon O'Carroll, but certainly there has to be a, a, a very valid questioning. You know, are the players responding to, to what the coaches are asking them to? You know, you go to Tong, you know, you hear the pre-match thoughts from Eamon O'Carroll, you know, he's happy with the offence after those eight tries scored against Dewsbury. Happy with the defence conceding just the one try but certainly in terms of defence when in possession and conceding penalties and certainly in terms of discipline with ball in hand coming up with silly silly errors um, it must like I say frustrate Eamon O'Carroll frustrate Lee Greenwood uh, and frustrate Brian Noble Bradford have conceded a set restart here for hands in at the rook according to referee Brad Milligan who's doing his best to, to try and let this game flow but again the players are taking it out of his hands so fresh set of six here for the Crusaders it's still Bradford 24 it is North Wales Crusaders 2 at Odsall Stadium West Yorkshire Radio West Yorkshire Rugby League as uh, Bushell now gives the ball towards Costello Costello's come back on the field don't forget North Wales are still down to 12 men with uh, Joseph Baldwin in the bin um, and I think that'll be a very good effort from Carl Foster's side if they just concede that Kevin Apo try whilst down to 12 men. They're on the last tackle here. Ball goes along the line to Abel. Abel on the power play, fronts up. Good defence. Who was that? John Davis. Davis has just come in and he has wrapped up Adam Carr and it was a power play move. And North Wales were trying to move the ball from the left towards the right, targeting Kieran Gill and Tafua on this main stand touchline. But John Davis has just come up with a tackle of the game. Well, you saw Aribi Doro put in one against Dewsbury last week. That was of equal measure. Um, and I'm not. I don't have a seismograph in front of me, but he might have just caused a little bit of a ripple. Anyway, Bradford back in possession now after doing another good stint in defence with Dan Smith taking three North Wales Crusaders defenders with him. He's 10 shy of halfway, peeling for a penalty, non forthcoming. Quick play of the ball as Flanagan's pass just drifts flat, missed by the officials. So Bradford have got away with one there as Apple 
plays the ball inside the North Wales Crusaders half of the field and here come the Bradford Bulls they're surging forward but they've run out of tackles they're on the last so it'll be the boot of Jordan Lilly Lilly targets Abel Tafua palms it back towards McGowan but it's just bounced kindly for Toby Hughes and Hughes has got there and it remains Bradford Bulls 24 Brad, uh, Bradford Bulls 24 North Wales Crusaders 2 so Full time scores, early doors, Batley 48, Workington 18, it was Dewsbury 8, York 14, and it was Fato Heath 0, Featherston 72. Elsewhere, Halifax 22, Whitehaven 4, it's still Hunslet 10, Keighley 12, Midland Hurricanes look like they could be booking their place through because they lead Rochdale by 20 points to 18, it's Swinton 26, West Hull 6. And as things currently stand, Widnes coming to Bradford in round 4 because it's 24-10 at Norton Park. North Wales Crusaders on the last tackle, boot to ball, it's gone into touch again. I think North Wales Crusaders are just happy here. That's the feeling I'm picking up from the game management and the game plan. They're not really targeting the Bradford Bulls line uh, anymore. They're just happy to uh, kick the ball into touch, turn around the balls, um, and, and probably leave Odsall with a very, very respected scoreboard uh, and a payday because obviously the big crowd inside Odsall this afternoon, it is a shared gate. So, we've had... 15 minutes gone of this second half, 25 left. Fast approaching the hour mark here at Odsall Stadium and it's more of the same, a bit clunky in attack from the Bradford Bulls, a bit disjointed, a bit jittery. Here goes Flanagan out of dummy half, gives the ball towards Gaskell. Gaskell had Butler and uh, McGowan around him but he decides to front up, takes three defenders with him, five metres inside the North Wales half of the field. And more messing around and a sloppy play of the ball as it goes from Smith to Lilly to Davis to McGowan who's going through a lot of footwork. I'm liking uh, Aidan McGowan's work rate. You saw it last week with those two try saving tackles uh, against Perry Whitley and Lewis Carr. Ten inside the North Wales half on tackle four. Davis now to Lilly. Lilly towards Gaskill, Bradford have space, they move the ball towards Arundel, Arundel towards the corner, Arundel 10 metres out, Arundel's uh, lost the ball, referee says that has come off a North Wales hand, he'll stop the clock, he'll talk to the touch judge, uh, Jaden Myers is saying that should be Bradford ball, it's 24 points to two here, Brad Milligan is having a look and he'll make the decision here, is that going to be Bradford's ball, certainly Arundel was heading towards the corner, and referee Brad Milligan says it is Bradford's ball because it was a North Wales Crusaders hand who touched it. So not quite, not quite uh, error number 13, unlucky for some, but it is a repeat set of six for Bradford, 10 out from the North Wales line. So he's back out of the Simbin here is uh, Joseph Baldwin and Dana Cora has passed the HIA so Dana Cora about to come back on the field Bradford hunting try number five as Gaskill gives the ball to Apo Apo two metres out he's on his knees looking for support no one there Flanagan's behind him quick play the ball Flanagan goes himself Flanagan from dummy half door slams shut and Flanagan's rolled over on his back wiggling forward there Davis now in at dummy half Davis goes across the face of the post to Gaskill Gaskill boot to ball uh, and North Wales Crusaders have come up, come up with possession from Sean Costello so Gaskill was looking to put a, a diagonal kick in behind the North Wales Crusaders line looking for Paposhi, McGowan uh, Arundel and Myers to put pressure on that kick chase but uh, good defence from Sean Costello and now Bradford have conceded um, another penalty. So it's eight penalties apiece because there was hands in at the rook, I do believe, according to Brad Milligan. So 16 penalties, a bit of a high penalty count from both sides. Eight apiece as North Wales now move the ball down the middle here with Barrett. Chris Barrett, he'll, 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 he'll be a man of the match contention. Uh, for the neutrals. In fact, um, you know, the work ethic from Chris Barrett very nearly uh, scoring right at the start of the game. North Wales led 2 0 right up until the 21st minute. So we've got 22 minutes left here at Odsall. It's still Bradford 24, North Wales 2. Tries from the Bulls from Doro, Arundel, McGowan, and Apo. North Wales five inside the Bradford half of the field. 
out of dummy half here from Borwinson, who's come back on the field after having that 10 minute spell in the sim bin as North Wales move the ball over on this main stand side to Taylor. Taylor's wrapped up by Davis and Lilly. The 25 out now from the Bradford Bulls line as Baldwin now gives the ball towards Hughes. Hughes, a clever little kick early in the count behind McGowan. McGowan does well and McGowan puts his body on the line because coming straight at him was Arvan and Reed. And it was Reed that wrapped up McGowan. And now it's going to be Myers on tackle two. 15 out from his own line. Good kick return there from Myers. And uh, he's just shy of the Bradford Bulls 20 metre line. And we're getting another penalty here because North Wales are laying in the rook. Uh, and that is delaying Jaden Myers getting to his feet. So Bradford penalty count now 9 8 in their favour. Uh, Paul Holbrook says Crusaders have only scored two points, which is a great job defensively, but he thinks the general feeling is penalties are going to cost Bradford daily against better teams or in more important games. Well, this is an important game. It is a, a Challenge Cup game. It's knockout rugby league, um, but, you know, Bradford just a little bit flat in, in attack. Can only call it as we see it. An hour gone, 20 minutes to go. Here goes Flanagan to McGowan. The 20 out from the North Wales line as Dan Smith goes behind Flanagan. Now he gives the ball to Akorus. This comes straight out of the head injury assessment bin. And you can see there on Bulls TV the 15 metres out as it goes from Flanagan on the short side towards Gaskell. Chester Butler, he's in at the corner. And that is Bradford's fifth try of the afternoon. And it's 28 points to two on the hour mark. We've got 20 minutes left here at Odsall. And if you didn't know, Bradford are now in the draw for the fourth round. And it's looking like it will be Widnes who are coming to Odsall in a fortnight's time. And that's quite an attractive tie. We know a couple of games will be on TV on the stream, so... That could very well be one of those games that ends up on the, uh, the red button. But we're in the 61st minute and Chester Butler has crossed for his first try of season 2024. So a much, much better set of six there from the Bulls. And once again, I sound like Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. When Bradford keep it simple and effective and stick to the game plan, which is... You're using your wingers to get that early yardage, that early ascendancy on those kick chase returns, those changeover of possessions, and then you've got those two to three tackles where the forwards make the hard yards forward before you end up in your opponent's danger area where you can have the halfbacks linking alongside McGowan in that spine. Bradford about to put an extra two points on here with the boot of Jordan Lilly. Can he beat the kick predictor? Yes, he can. The kick predictor said 74%. And Lilly's five from five this afternoon. He was four from eight last weekend. This will improve his goal kicking percentage. He's at 100% this afternoon. And it's Bradford 30. North Wales two here at Odsall. Chester Butler, great trying at the corner. Much, much better from the Bulls. Lady scores on the door, Halifax 22. Whitehaven 4, and it's Hunslick 10, Keefley 16. Hunslick now trail by a try, and in the second half, two Ellis Robson tries, alongside tries from Charlie Graham and former Bradford man, Oscar Thomas. Well, I spoke to him and O'Carroll about that game against Keefley next week, and uh, the best way of describing it is it will be an absolute ambush. Keefley will be licking their lips and hoping Bradford perform like they have this afternoon with all those gifts of the 12 errors and the eight penalties. So back on the restart here, West Yorkshire Radio, West Yorkshire Rugby League, Mick the Game caller Gleddle will hear, hopefully from Jordan Lilly before we close the show, but here goes Flanagan to Lilly, to Gill, Gill to Tafua, Bradford just run out of uh, space as they look to move the ball wide there, so they have to come back in field with Tafua. Davis is in there at dummy half, now to Lilly. To Gaskell, to McGowan. McGowan through a gap, and here goes Aidan McGowan. McGowan, he's got able to beat inside support from Gaskell. Gaskell to Flanagan. Flanagan goes underneath the post. Electric rugby league from the Bradford Bulls. It was something out of nothing, and it was the key architect. It was Mr. Aidan McGowan 
and McGowan has just created something out of nothing. And at long, long last, from a Bradford perspective, this big crowd have something to cheer. Flanagan's underneath the support. Excellent support play from Gaskell and Flanagan. 64 minutes gone on the clock. That's the try. That's on the highlight reel, let me tell you. That was sensational stuff from young Aidan McGowan. Well, we'll open the man of the match uh, voting and uh, if we're going to have a, a poll this afternoon, we've got to include uh, Aidan McGowan. Uh, we have to uh, include a Reby Doro. And he goes a lot of work unnoticed, but he certainly put his body on the line in that first half. Uh, and he's back out there for the second, Sam Hallis. So you've got Hallis, Doro... Uh, and McGowan, those are the three to vote for this afternoon on West Yorkshire Radio, West Yorkshire Rugby League. And if we're throwing a North Wales Crusader man in, uh, it has to be Chris Barrett. In fact, he gets my man of the match. But that was lovely play from the Bradford Bulls. They literally, from inside their own half, on the restart, a lovely sweeping move, Lily Gaskell to McGowan. And then it was that support play from Flanagan. Lily from in front of the post, six from six. Bradford 36, North Wales Crusaders 2 here at Odsall Stadium. This one now is blowing out. That was a lovely eye-catching score from the Bulls. And at long, long last they make this North Wales Crusaders resistance. Just pay. McGowan obviously playing this afternoon. He will be able to feature against Widnes Vikings here in round four. Bradford once again very nearly coming up with an error on the restart. That was drilled along the floor. So clearly a lot of championship and League One clubs who Bradford are going to face this season. Perhaps see that as a bit of a frailty and how Bradford deal with these tricky restarts. But the back in possession on the restart, West Yorkshire Radio, West Yorkshire Rugby League, Bradford 36, North Wales 2 here at Odsall. And that was a lovely try from the Bradford Bulls. McGowan went on that sort of curved run, taking on both Reed and Arvan. He then had Abel coming into his vision before that inside support from Gaskell. And then Gaskell give it to Flanagan and Flanagan underneath the post for his first uh, competitive try um, of 2024. And here come Bradford now inside the North Wales half of the field as Flanagan gives the ball towards Davis. Davis is wrapped up 25 metres out centre field. They're on the last here now. Flanagan to Lilly. Lilly kicks over the top straight into the arms of uh, Owen Abel, but Abel's immediately wrapped up there by Kieran Gill and George Tafua. North Wales Crusaders back in possession, 15 metres out from their own try line here at Odsall Stadium. A lot of people are saying it's McGowan, uh, Ada McGowan, who, uh, who, who's going to get the, uh, the man of the match uh, this afternoon. And uh, I will not begrudge anybody who decides to vote that way. He got the man of the match last week uh, against Dewsbury Rams. So, Bradford penalised here for being offside, not square. So, nine penalties apiece now. And we have... 13 minutes left on the clock. So, Bradford are in the fourth round draw. And barring a late Doncaster comeback, it is now Widnes 28, Doncaster 16. So, Widnes Vikings will be coming here to Odsall in round four. And that probably will be either the Saturday stream game or, or, or on the Sunday. So, uh, you'd expect the cameras want to show that one. Here come North Wales. Another set restart Bradford have conceded here. That's Sam Hallis who's pushing in at the rook and the players come together. Well, Sam Hallis has reacted to something that has happened in the rook there. So the referee's going to stop the clock. There was a bit of pushing and shoving there from both Sam Hallis and Callum Cameron. So it's the... Uh, the, the interchange forward, Callum Cameron, who's come on the field and something's happened there in, in and around the ruck, in and around the play of the ball. Referee Brad Milligan from Workington just trying to separate the players. He'll stop the clock. As we say, we've got 12 minutes left on the clock and uh, he'd given a six again. He'd then given another six again to North Wales Crusaders um, and then there's been pushing and shoving at the ruck. So, he's wanting to uh, find... Callum Cameron and he's going to have a word with uh, Owen Abel as well about Callum Cameron's conduct 
Does this go against North Wales Crusaders? It does. Penalty to Bradford. Boos and jeers from the Crusaders supporters. So there we go. They had the six again. They got given another six again, North Wales. And then because they were in possession and someone's pushed Hallis at the Rook, Bradford get the penalty. So, 10 minutes left on the clock now. Doro tackle one. Quick play the ball from him. Ball goes back down the middle. Another set restart given here. Well, we've lost count of the penalties and the set restarts. But Bradford tackle count restarts as it goes wide here now with Gaskill. Gaskill towards Peposhe. Peposhe. He's rolled over 15 metres out over on the far stand side. Flanagan goes in there at dummy half. Sloppy ball from him. Bounces up off the floor towards Apo. Apo wrapped up 12 out. Three tackles left for the Bradford Bulls. They hunt try number seven and 40 points on the scoreboard as Dan Smith draws in the defenders, gives the ball to Flanagan, Flanagan to Akora. Akora's wrapped up there by Rainford and Ellis and Akora underneath the North Wales post. And Bradford's leading try scorer for the previous two seasons. He's making a real statement of intent. Lily, a lovely kick into the in-goal area. Nothing that Holmes, Arvan or Abel could do about that. And this scoreline now, at long, long last, blowing out in favour of the Bulls. They lead 40 points to two. And Kieran Gill gets in on the act. So Doro, Arundel, McGowan, Apo, Butler, Flanagan and Gill, seven different try scorers for the Bradford Bulls where you've got eight minutes left on the clock here at Odsall and a chance for Jordan Lilly to continue his unblemished goal kicking record this afternoon. Currently six from six. Five metres in from touch on this main stand side. Kick predictors already saying 64%. Still, Widnes Vikings 28, Doncaster 18. So, Bradford will host Widnes here at Odsall in the fourth round on the weekend in a fortnight's time. And Keeflet have gone further in front against Hunslick. They lead Hunslick 22 points to 10. It's still Halifax 22, Whitehaven 4 at the Shea. And earlier on, it was York 14, Dewsbury 8. Jordan Lilly, toughest goal kicking assignment of the afternoon, it hits the right hand upright and drops over the black dot. Lily seven from seven. Bradford Bulls 42. North Wales Crusaders two here at Odsall. And I think when you look at the scoreboard in this second half, four tries from Apo, Butler, Flanagan and Gill. Much, much more like it from the Bradford Bulls, but it'll be interesting to gauge just how much of a rocket Eamon O'Carroll sent up into the Bulls stratosphere. So West Yorkshire Rugby League, West Yorkshire Radio, Bulls TV, make the game call a Gleddle here. Final seven and a half minutes here at Odsall. I think we can say by looking at the votes, Ada McGowan has been given the, uh, the Bulls live man of the match this afternoon. A very, very strong performance on his competitive Odsall debut. So, Ada McGowan. Certainly going to keep a lot of pressure on Billy Jowett when Billy Jowett returns from that back injury. Apo into the tackle, palms the ball back now towards Gaskell. Gaskell up and over halfway and here come Bradford. All of a sudden the purring here at Odsall in the dying minutes of this game. There's more messing around at the play of the ball. Referee just says you've got to play it, Lee, as it goes now from Flanagan. Flanagan to Smith, to Lilly. Lilly through a gap. Lilly, oh, good defence, though, from Hughes. He had to just keep hold of Lilly, and it's another set restart here because Hughes was holding down Lilly in the tackle. So tackle one, and it's Dan Smith. The 20 metres out from the Crusaders line. Bradford hunting an eighth try here at Odsall Stadium. As Dan Acora's 12 metres out now, and it's another set restart. There we go. Bradford have had seven set restarts in this game. As Lilly now... Gives the ball towards Apo. Apo rolled over on his back. That's tackle one. So effectively, this is a third consecutive spell of possession for the Bradford Bulls as Flanagan goes wide towards McGowan. McGowan on for a brace of scores. Levy and Zongo comes in and wraps up the Huddersfield giant Loney. Bradford trying to pinch one out of dummy half. 
but Flanagan is hauled up on the North Wales line by Owen Abel. McGowan's in at dummy half. It goes to Apo. Apo's pass has been knocked on by North Wales Crusaders. Bradford will have the scrum. This will be a fourth set of six coming up here for the Bradford Bulls. Underneath the North Wales post. So, this elsewhere, witness have kicked a penalty. So, now 30 points to 18, as we said earlier. Batley, 48, Workington, 18. Fato Heath, nil. Featherston, 72. So, a big score for Featherston. Uh, Halifax still 22-4 up against Whitehaven. Uh, and Rochdale have now taken the lead against the Midland Hurricanes. They lead Mark Dunning's Midlands Hurricane side, 24 points to 20. Swinton lead West Hull, 46-6. So from the scrum, it goes from Flanagan to McGowan. McGowan towards the line, five metres out. He's held up short. He'll get the play of the ball in, will young Aidan McGowan. Flanagan misses out Apo, gives the ball there to Paposhi. Paposhi's rolled over there, and it's a good defence from Levy and Zongu and Callum Cameron. They're going to get up and play the ball with Flanagan. He goes surging towards the line, and Flanagan's in. Flanagan's got the ball down. It will be a brace of scores for George Flanagan. An eighth try of the afternoon for the Bradford Bulls, and that will confirm Bradford's play place in the fourth round of the Challenge Cup and they will host the Witness Vikings here at Odsall in a fortnight's time and the second half has been most most pleasing and a much improved performance by the Bradford Bulls we've got five minutes left on the clock and George Flanagan's got a brace this afternoon and a lot of people now will look at the scoreboard and uh, will look well that's quite a comprehensive Bradford performance a lot of people might have expected maybe a couple of points more, but I guess when you look at the positives, you've got to say Bradford's defence has restricted North Wales all afternoon. North Wales up into the scoring as Jordan Lilly puts it between the posts, eight from eight. But Bradford's defence this afternoon has been the plus point that will get highlighted by Eamon O'Carroll and Lee Greenwood and also Glenn Morrison involved in the, the coaching setup. So Bradford 48, North Wales 2 here at Odsall Stadium. And the clock is stopped because we're inside five minutes. So three and a half left on the clock. Well, Bradford going again for a ninth try. All of a sudden, the scoreboard gets to 50. But it's 48-2 and I think North Wales will still be the happier of the two sides this afternoon in terms of their performance and what they've managed to achieve in frustrating and also uh, restricting the Bradford Bulls. Bradford, as we said, they've been their own worst enemy at times, and here we go. Jaden Myers on the restart. He's had the ball <laughs> stolen or punched out of his grasp. Um, so Bradford now, they're on penalty number 11, uh, and they've had the seven-set restart. So uh, not the best performance, discipline-wise, by North Wales Crusaders. Well, Aidan McGowan has been given the uh, sponsors' man of the match. As we said, uh, I, uh, in 2024, like the good old BCB and Pulse Radio days, we're going to uh, let you, the loyal listeners, uh, come up with the uh, the man of the match. But certainly, looking at the votes, so Aidan McGowan, he's won the uh, he's won the West Yorkshire Rugby League man of the match. So uh, we might be having to catch up with Aidan McGowan again. But here goes Flanagan out of dummy half after that penalty. Short ball to Apo. Apo back to Flanagan. Flanagan head down. He's wrapped up there by Bushell and Ellis. And all of a sudden, Bradford now they're just about ten metres out to left hand side. Of of the North Wales post. We've got just a couple of minutes left in this game. Another try here for Bradford brings up 50 as the ball goes from McGowan to Tafua. Tafua runs lateral, goes for a little bit of a stroll, uh, and he decides to take the tackle here. Well, he's gone down in a bit of pain as George Tafua is going to play the ball underneath the post. This gets out up and has a look at who was that who clattered him as Dan Smith now is going to be a metre out from that North Wales Crusaders try line. So Bradford on the last tackle now, right on top of the North Wales Crusaders try line as Flanagan gives the ball here towards Lilly. Lilly kicks towards Kieran Gill but it's been taken in there by Kieran Taylor and I think North Wales Crusaders befitting of their performance what we've seen here this afternoon they're not going to come up with an error and the Hooter will announce that is full time here at Odsall Stadium Bradford through to the fourth round of the Challenge Cup but certainly 
certainly Bradford have had to work incredibly hard here this afternoon. Certainly at points in the second half, the attack looked and felt cohesive uh, with those five second half tries.